I'm gonna answer a very good question. Can DJI go as fast as analog? We got two quads, custom pre-built, ready to go. They are the exact same quad. One is on DJI, one is on analog, and we're gonna see today which one goes faster. What's going on guys? This is Ron from OAS. We are at Bill Frederick Park in Orlando, Florida, and this is the drone zone for FPV racing. I think that was one of the only things that was missing in the FPV industry was a safe place to go fly and race or do whatever you wanted to do without being bothered. You know, this is a, a safe place for people to come and not worry about anything, just go ahead and rip some pack. And if you want to learn how to race, which it can be intimidating, this was one of the, the reasons we set this up for that. Here is the home of the rotor racers. So we do have multi-GP uh, official size gates. We've held some pretty large races here. I actually orchestrated, we had a 30 foot Jacob's ladder. We had a triple dive gate. A, uh, a power loop gate and some slaloms and chicanes. It was crazy, it was absolutely amazing. Evan Turner actually came out and won. The monthly points race is more so for the hobbyist uh, to intermingle with the pro guys, uh, to come out here and get like uh, racing tips and things like that so they can progress through the sport and ultimately help it grow. So we've tried to remove like all the like variables possible to kind of make it a controlled test. We have two quads that have been built. It's a frame that I designed, it's the OAS Volk, and fish, Volk means uh, wolf in Russian. Six S power, same ESCs, same flight controller. The only difference is one system is an analog system and one is the digital. So they'll be able to essentially race the same quad back to back on the same course and yeah. see how it affects their times, how it affects gotcha, their, gotcha, you know, gotcha. their experience or their ability to predict turns or whatever. Right. So despite the fact that Rotor Riot has completely and ubiquitously sold its soul to DJI and we're complete chills, link in the description where you can buy all the DJI FPV gear. Please support us at RotorRiot.com. This episode is not sponsored by DJI. If you've been following our channel for a while, you have seen we've worked with DJI. They've supported a ton of our content and we really appreciate that support. And while this concept is actually something they wanted us to do, we felt it'd be better to do on an episode that was not sponsored by them so that you guys can be sure that there's no kind of bias or sway that we're building into the results. We're gonna be showing you uh, exactly what happens. So you're seeing if the latency is there, can you race with it? Is it a feasible option for racing? And I'm gonna tell you right now, it is, but we're gonna let one of the pros test it out and see how he likes it. So the plan is we're gonna do six batteries total. We're gonna do three batteries on analog, three batteries on DJI. So these batteries that I fly, these first ones here, are my very first batteries flying these quads. So we're gonna go one battery analog, then one battery on DJI, and vice versa until we basically flown an even number of batteries on each setup and then we'll compare the times and see where we're at. So just to make the testing a bit more fair so I don't have to learn the track or anything like that, um, I went ahead and flew the track a few times on some of my own personal setups that way. I know the course, I know where all the gates are and everything like that. It's just gonna come down to flying the quads now. Barbo, let me know when you're ready to go. I am ready. <laughs> Faster every lap. So how do you feel about those those laps? Do you think those are you want to use those as your data for DJI? For the first battery, I think I'll get faster. I need if I bump that that camera is a bit low angle wise, so I just need to bump it up. So one thing I noticed flying the DJI is every time we went around that corner, I'm not sure if it was set to 25 milliwatt or 700, but I could definitely feel and see the latency, like the frames stop for just a second. It wasn't anything that messed me up, really. I, it's kind of like static where you just know where it's gonna be, but I definitely noticed it when I was coming around the tree. Otherwise, the image looked pretty good. All right, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Thirteen ninety two. Thirteen. Oh no. Oh. Oh wow. Twelve eighty two. Yep. 
1282 is a top for now analog 1282. What I'm gonna do to make the DJI more fair is I'm gonna run two batteries back to back on it without switching. That way I'm kind of getting the memory of it and we'll see. So we're okay, ready. Because ready. Like 1471. That's his first lap is always slower. Well, I cheat, dang it. This is not gonna be a fast one. 1584. What was it? 1284. Oh! Down there. Unfortunately. 1419. Oh, Rolling. Oh, oh. oh. He's down. down. Your fastest lap was yes. the same. It felt good. The I, same. Like, I knew when I was on that lap, I'm like, this is going to be a fast one. I almost <laughs> wanted to back it off to be like, oh. oh why would you know? <laughs> It's all good. Like it, no, it but did you think that was gonna be possible? Did you think you were gonna be able to yeah. do an equal lap on yeah. DJI? 100%. Okay, but now do you think you can take analog and keep beating it? Yeah. All right, let's just keep going. Let's keep. We're going. gonna do one more on DJI right now while I'm used to the radio, and then we're gonna do my final pack on analog, and we'll do the comparison. Fourteen oh one. This is not. I oh, just went lights out. She's done. Battery came off. Yeah, I went lights out. What happened? Battery came I off. I crashed. I'm just gonna be honest though when I say it. Like I'm, I can see and fight this variable latency this entire time. And is I, the latency I, changing in the yes, goggles? Yes. When I'm, I can tell you for a fact. And yes, it is a different quad, yes, it is a different controller. So I'm having to overcome those variables. So take everything I'm about to say with a grain of salt. But when I'm flying through like these 180s, turns that you get repetitive at over and over again, it just, every time I do it, I have to, it's like I'm changing something every time. So Where with the analog quad, even flying a different analog quad, I was able just to quickly, yes, yeah. no. And I think part of that would be knowing the location and knowing where it's going to have that extra latency there for just a second. You're saying that a variable latency is impossible yeah. to adjust to and dial in. 100% because you can, it's ne it's gonna always vary. It's never gonna be the same in every gig quirk. And that's where consistency comes into play. Like that 12.8 second lap, like I said, it was a good feeling lap and I was kind of on it, but I could never repeat that again. Let me be very clear on this episode before everyone goes and hates me. I love HD racing. I love the way it looks. I love the beautiful image and everything like that. I want this to be a great system. We don't know I think happens. it will be a great system. It, it is just not there for racing right now. That used to be an MMCX connector. That used to be an MMCX. That could be when cool. did that happen? When did that? Yeah, we don't know. So yeah. we don't know if that run was good, bad. Who know? What we know is he's done running DJI for the day. Yeah. And what we know is the average so far is DJI is performing worse. But if you just consider the fastest lap, they're even. So I think you need to take another analog run and yeah, see one how more analog can run. you beat it, so, and if so, oh, how much it. can if you If you go out there and you just put in 12 second laps on analog, bing, bing, bing. No, I'll do then it. Then that just proves so it. So the latency you said you hit in a dive gate, you come closer to the ground on the exit on a dive gate every single time. Yep. That's with, true. With yep. I'm finding myself so on a lot of gates. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'm skimming the ground, sometimes I'm not. I think the biggest thing I take away from this all is it's just not the same every time. So okay. whether that was because the MMCX antennas or not, I don't know. But we're gonna fly the analog quad one more time. Keep going. Twelve seventy three. Oh. Right on it. He, you finally beat DJI a little bit. Twelve oh eight. Oh, there it is. Can he break eleven? Twelve twenty three. Come on, now give me an eleven. Battery's dead. Battery's toasted. All right, we got another battery. Let's hot swap it. Hot I swap can do it. it. I can do it. Eleven. Okay. Eleven second lap. Ready eleven. Barbell? Yeah, I'm ready. Eleven ninety nine. Eleven ninety nine. Oh, does that count as eleven? That could be within your margin of error. Clicking the button. Eleven ninety nine again. I'm not you. 
Is that within the margin? I'm not sure. I'm gonna can't. I mean, I couldn't do that if I tried. So. 11.48. Oh, that's there we go. Two 11.99s in a row. Okay. How do you f***ing get that? That, I mean, that consistency you can't argue with. Either. That just proves how consistent I am as a timer. <laughs> and to be fair, we ran the same batteries on the DJI as we did on the analog set. The ex literally the exact same batteries. We boosted them up. The big thing them. is the consistency, which again, it's not a problem for free. Like, I think best, best case scenario is cinematic flying, mm. where you want to be able to get all the detail, frame your shot perfectly. You may even have a director riding along with you, yeah. guiding your shots. It, 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 there's no comparison for that. Yep. Freestyle, also, I use it exclusively for freestyle. The variable latency isn't a problem. Yeah. But as you continue to move along that spectrum of sport flying and get to high level sport consistent like racing you yep. ultimately get to racing yep. that's where that variable latency is going to start i agree i use it on my snoop i absolutely love it it was actually gap 707 when we were in singapore inside who inspired me to try dji on a snoop i saw him running it and just the amount of detail he had being able to fly inside and be able to show it to other people there's nothing that can beat it at that speed even flying drew's freestyle quad while he was not paying attention you don't really notice it it's just when you're when you're pushing really really fast and you're you know flying the same lines over and over on the course that's when you notice the difference. I'm fly. I'm quite yeah, it's really good. So one thing that I really want to bring up too is there are instances with analog where it is so bad. We call it multipathing, where especially when you're flying indoors, the video is just horrendous. You can't even see where you're going. And because of that, we don't get to go as fast as we normally would. In an instance like that, I would gladly take a system like the DJI system in order to be able to see where I'm going and focus on being consistent because of that versus not being able to see with an analog system. I think in most situations, analog wins though. I hope I express this enough. I really want to love the DJI system. I mm -hmm. love HD flying. I love being able to see more than I can with analog. For me, the variable latency is the big drawback. And if DJI or some other company can come up with a solution to that, I would be all in. I think all the other things, like with the headset being kind of big and the mm -hmm. air unit being kind of large, I think I can work around those things. But until that variable latency is fixed, I'm going to be sticking with analog. For racing or all around? I think for racing for sure. I have my own personal freestyle frame now and I've been loving the HD version of that, being able to, to fly it in unique locations and not have to worry about multi-pathing and being able just to show people what FPV looks like. I think there's nothing better than that. I'm really jazzed to be flying with kind of the first generation of real HD FPV. It's only going to get better from here. Comment down below what you think. Do you think that we did the test fairly? What would you have done differently if you I know, were I know you got something. I know you got something. Got something. There's, that's always, the there's always a way to improve the test. Yep. We try to do our best here and I think this was a pretty fair shakedown of what the differences were. But if you are a freestyle pilot or if you're just a pilot getting into this hobby, I would highly recommend the DJI system. I don't think unless you're racing at that very top level that you're going to notice that variable latency very much at all. It's hard to say. It's, it's hard, hard to say. To say. It's, it's never bothered me. I can do all the freestyle maneuvers that I've ever been able to do. You might think I'm stretching it, but I really think that it's helped me improve. It's all upside, but I, I mean, there's no argument with the data when it comes yep. to racing. But whether you are flying an analog system that you've had for years or the latest and greatest in digital, the most important thing is to just have fun. As long as you're having fun, you're the best pilot you can be. You can get everything that you need to keep enjoying flying at our store, rotoriot.com. You supporting us by shopping at our store helps us continue to make episodes like these and we hope you enjoy it and if you did hit that like button i'm alex this is drew we'll see you guys on the next one Ooh. did you guys talk about the variable latency oh my gosh